Chapter 70. The newcomer nodded. Excellent. Yemma will work things out by himself and begin to repair the damage. He cocked his head to the side, frowning. Raditz's power has dropped almost to nothing, he requires our assistance, or he will be destroyed within, I estimate, thirty seconds. Place your hand on my shoulder. Pickin did so, hesitantly. You still haven't told me who you are. Unimportant, the creature insisted. Now, we're running out of time, so hold on. Instant transmission is quite a jolt when you experience it for the first time. Raditz gasped for air, pulling himself up out of the pond. He looked up to see Janemba shifting into view a couple of feet away. Can we take a break or something? Come on, time out. He grinned nervously as it strode towards him. Five minutes. He. Janemba raised one hand, energy building around it. Before it could fire, however, there was a familiar, almost mechanical noise, and a storm of flames blazed to life and surrounded Janemba. Burning shoot. At Pickens' words, the inferno channeled itself at Janemba, completely obscuring its form. The celestial fighter touched down, supported Raditz with one arm, and flew him to, relative, safety atop a nearby hill. Behind them, Janemba's form appeared silhouetted in the flames, completely unharmed. Special Beam Cannon A voice shouted, a spiraling beam of energy crashing into the back of Janemba's head and knocking it flat. Raditz stared open-mouthed as his rescuer landed in front of them. Cell. Surprised. Cell grinned. With the afterlife's check-in station out of commission, the wards keeping me imprisoned were destroyed. I am free to pursue perfection anew. Wait. Pick an eyed Cell with suspicion. This is Cell. You seem to know an awful lot about the situation for someone supposedly locked up for the last few years. As you pointed out, I have been locked up, Cell replied. Not a great deal to do, so, I reached out with my mind, developed my senses far beyond what they'd been before. I've had my eyes on all the realms of Otherworld for quite some time. Well, why the hell would you help us? Pickin asked. Not that we don't appreciate it, Raditz pointed out. Cell shrugged. The total destruction of the universe is hardly to my benefit. While I've been incarcerated and unable to improve, Raditz has far outstripped my own power, and even he has been defeated one-on-one -on -one by this Janemba creature. The situation decrees a temporary alliance. Speaking of which, here it comes. Pickin raised his guard. Damn, looks like our attacks didn't even leave a mark. Raditz nodded. Get used to that. I was faster than it, but nothing I did caused any lasting damage. Cell tensed up, gathering his energy. We're not going to win a straight fight, we need time to plan. Using instant transmission, he appeared with one hand on Janemba's arm, vanishing again. When he rematerialized next to them, he was alone, and staggering backwards from a bruise on his head. Where did you take it? Raditz asked. Other side of hell. Cell explained. Didn't expect it to be so fast, it hit me before I escaped. I don't think it knows where it is, so we should have a couple of minutes to come up with something. Like what? Raditz. Another hissing noise, and Kaishin appeared, Kibito at his side as ever. I, gaw. The pair jumped back, noticing the malevolent bio-android near them. Cell. Where did you? Don't waste your time, Raditz sighed. He's helping, for the moment. I'm also the most powerful fighter you have, as of right now, so no backtalk, all right? Cell smiled, full of self-confidence. Kaishin scowled. A situation I intend to rectify. Kibito. Kibito nodded, quickly pointing both palms at Raditz and channeling his healing magics. A warm glow passed from him to the scion, and Raditz felt his energy restored in an instant. Oh, whoa. He blinked, looking down at his body. Just like the census, that's quite a talent. Indeed. Supreme Kai's expression lightened. Now you're healed, you should be able to take care of the creature, yes? I don't know. Raditz scratched his head. Janemba's pretty tough. You saw what state it left me in last time, and I didn't even leave so much as a scratch on it. I'm pretty sure I could hit it with a head-on Kamehameha and all it'd do is tire me out even faster. I appreciate your help, but you might just have been prolonging the inevitable. What? Even with your new transformation? I'm afraid so. I've got nothing that could kill it outright, anyway. Kaishin paused. How about making a hole? Could you create an opening in its armor somehow? If you could do that, its unstable negative energy will no longer be contained. I'll be able to exploit this, and use a sealing spell to separate it from its power. You sound like you know about this Janemba thing. What is it? Where did it come from? The problem began with the negative energy machine, you see. I've been investigating, and it seems that it malfunctioned somehow all the accumulated negative energy from countless evil souls was released. 
It latched onto the nearest life form, a young ogre working maintenance nearby, transforming him into that creature, Janemba, did you say? A being of purest evil. Strange, I could have sworn that I've heard the name Janemba before, but where? Never mind. Focus. Back to the point, can you break through its armor? Raditz considered this. Well, there is one thing I could try, I guess. What is it? Pickin asked urgently. Tell me there's some kind of secret technique you've been perfecting these last few years. As a matter of fact, there is. Raditz looked serious for once. But, I haven't mastered it yet. And it's pretty energy intensive. I'm gonna need some time to gather enough power, so everybody stand back. Better use it with Super Scion 3, no point going anything less than all out here. Still, I've never tried this in combination with level 3 before. Hope I can control it. Air. Said an aged voice. Is, is this a bad time? The being that stood behind them looked for all the world like an elderly version of the Supreme Kai. A small gray mustache perched on his upper lip. Wah. Came the general response. It's just that I've spent millions of years trapped in that sword. The man shrugged, indicating the broken Z-sword lying on the ground beside him. I'd like to thank you for letting me out. He paused. Hmm, that's one large evil key way over there. Who, are you? Kaishin managed. Why, I'm you, he answered. Fifteen generations older, though. F-15. There's a second Supreme Kai. Pickin wondered. Oh, yes. You're probably wondering how I'm still alive. He paused. Everyone was silent, eagerly waiting for him to continue. Um, well, I'll tell you later, anyway. I think that enemy of yours is about to come back, and I don't really want to be around when it does. I assume you have a plan to deal with it. Of sorts, Raditz admitted. The Z-Sword was meant to provide ultimate power, Kaishin said, how, exactly, do you construe that from, there's a millennia-old Kai inside it? Excellent. Now, if you would. The old Kai stepped up to Kibito. You know instant movement, don't you? Single to the sacred world of the Kais, if you'd be so kind. Kibito gulped, complying. How did he know? They vanished, and Kibito shortly reappeared on his own. For that matter, what makes him so sure the creature is about to return? Janemba growled, confused. Where had the bug man taken it? It wanted to finish the long-haired one. He'd heard it. It couldn't let that go. Then, a familiar feeling. Like a spike being driven into its mind. The ground shook. And, off in the distance, countless miles away, a light. Raditz had managed to successfully become a Super Scion 3 once more. It's not anger, this form, he reminded himself as he completed the exhausting transformation. It's focus. Perfect calm. Raging and violent on the outside, serene within. He set his jaw, summoning up all his energy to begin to prepare his attack. Golden streams of power flowed through his body, illuminating his surroundings. The question now, is, whether I can call forth this much energy, and still remain in Super Scion 3, failure to do either could at best weaken the attack, at worst, it could severely damage my own body. With a start, he noticed something. Guys. The others had seen it. Damn it. Cell growled, glaring at Janemba as it reformed near them. It's learned long-distance teleportation. Well done, Cell. Excellent plan, Pickin snorted. You bought us, oh, a whole minute, and made the monster more dangerous. You're a real credit to the team. Silence. Cell ordered. I'm the only reason you still exist. Think on that. Kaishin grew pale as Janemba reached the top of the hill. In any case, the four of us will have to hold it off until Raditz has gathered enough power. With all respect, my lord, you should stay back. Pick and warned. You'll only be getting yourself killed. Never thought I'd be saying this. Ready, Cell. Of course not, Cell said jovially. We're going to get slaughtered. And yet, I can feel the battle hunger within me, my scion cells cry out for blood. With that, he charged, picking not far behind. Janemba grinned, spreading its arms wide as they approached. Pickin opened with a quick jab, and Janemba twisted out of the way, spinning to face Cell and wrapping its tail around Pickin's neck. Cell fainted right, then kicked at its head, but again Janemba dodged, slapping Cell to the floor backhanded. While it did this, it brought its tail around, dragging Pickin in front of it and letting go, letting him fly after Cell. The two managed to come to a halt in midair, breathing heavily. It's toying with us, Cell said calmly. That's actually a good thing, though. Right, Pickin agreed. That should mean we'll last longer. Though his energy boiled the air around him, Raditz tried to remain calm inside. 
The key to this technique, well, it's unusual. Most of the time, it's about gathering power within you, then letting it flow to a point outside, but it still feels like it's part of you, an extension of yourself. This is different, almost like I'm crafting an external weapon. Certainly not what I'm used to. But he was getting there. He could feel it beginning to form. Cell might not survive this, Kibito said quietly. Unlike Pickin, I'm not sure if he's aware of what happens if you're killed while already dead and existing as a spirit body. If he dies, he'll be completely erased from existence, gone forever. We can only hope, Raditz muttered, cracking a weary smile. Pickin charged first, aiming a high kick, but Janemba shifted out of his path, appearing behind him. Cell flew in from the left to take advantage of what appeared to be an opening, and Janemba shifted again. Cell frowned, vanishing with instant transmission. They reappeared simultaneously, Janemba's elbow smashing into Cell's stomach, Janemba's movements were completely unpredictable, and Cell couldn't foresee its line of attack, whereas Janemba had observed Cell's previous uses of instant transmission and knew what to expect. He coughed, winded, and Pickin tried to cover for him with a quick energy barrage. Janemba simply waved a hand, shifting the attacks through a portal to directly above Raditz. He emerged unharmed, though singed. Pickin sighed, relieved. Luckily, Raditz is a lot stronger than me as well, those weren't enough to hurt him. Cell saw Janemba's back turned, and raised his hand above his head, digging deeper into his store of fighting techniques. Kienzen. The vibrating energy disc leapt forth, cutting through the air as it arced towards Janemba. It heard the attack coming, but ignored it, letting the Kienzen shatter on its seemingly impenetrable hide. Damn it all. Cell fumed. I've been in prison too long. I've let everyone overtake me by so much, even a concentrated attack like the Kienzen didn't break through its accursed armor. Janemba had weighed up its two opponents, and decided which one was the most fun. The other, it didn't have the patience for. Vanishing into a streak of high-speed motion, it rocketed past Pickin, kicking him hard across the face. He skidded away, then lay groaning on the floor, all the fight knocked out of him. Cell trembled slightly. Defeated so easily, and he wasn't far below my own power. I just have to hope Raditz can destroy the creature before it gets bored with me. Then, it'll be gone and the fool will be weakened, that will be my chance. Janemba floated up to Cell, who steadied his nerves. Just keep it distracted. That's all. Solar Flare. The technique's blinding flash was devastatingly effective against Janemba, who had never encountered it before. Cell followed up with a series of calculated, skillful physical attacks, making use of every striking surface on his body and targeting Janemba's least armored points while it was blinded. It flailed around, knocked back and forth by the onslaught, but its overwhelming speed and strength meant that it inevitably landed a lucky hit eventually, and that single hit sent Cell staggering away. Blinking and hissing furiously, it slowly recovered its vision, seeing Cell in a defensive stance, awaiting its attack. It obliged, rushing in and punching him in the throat. Cell choked, collapsed, and disappeared. At this moment, three other Cells, having previously hidden their power, tackled Janemba from behind, pulling it to the floor and raining down blows on it. You probably haven't encountered the multiform either, eh? One of the copies laughed. However, quickly tiring of this, Janemba threw out an explosive wave of energy that both carved out a crater beneath it and threw the cell clones away. Fearful of remaining vulnerable with his divided power, Cell hurriedly rejoined into one being, waiting for Janemba's next move. This was an interesting one, Janemba decided. Making more of itself like that. Well, two could play at that game. It flipped its wrist, using its key to pull one of the strange enormous jelly bean looking objects dotting the sky towards it. Using one finger, it shot out a thin energy beam that carved out a vaguely humanoid silhouette, then with another simple gesture sent the rest of the material flying away. It walked up to the outline, nodding in satisfaction at its handiwork, and then breathed on it. With a flash of purple light, the cutout was transfigured into a perfect copy of Cell, which stood resolutely between Janemba and the real Cell. Gore. Are you mocking me? Cell growled, only for the copy to say the exact same words simultaneously, in a high-pitched, childish tone, making his words sound petulant and ridiculous. Cell's eye twitched. I will destroy you, pale copy. Again, it imitated and parroted him. He took a step forwards, so did it. Dodged left, right, it mimicked him perfectly. It was like looking into a mirror. And that means it isn't going to let me pass it. Smiling and leaving them to it, Janemba turned its attention to Raditz. He was gathering together rather a lot of power. Something about it unsettled Janemba. It began to approach him, at a leisurely pace. The scion's expression grew frantic, and he tried to focus his energy at a faster pace. Cell was standing millimeters from his copy, staring at it stoically. It flatly returned the expression. Suddenly, he threw a punch, so did it, and their fists collided in midair. 
Snarling in frustration, he attacked furiously, darting left and right, striking high and low, but each time their attacking limbs collided, neither landing a solid hit. Abruptly, they somersaulted away, landing about twenty feet from each other. I will not be made light of. Cell insisted. I will not be made light of. It squeaked, much to his irritation. Time to find out if it's really an exact copy. Ka, me. They intoned in unison, one high voice and one low. Ha, me. Janemba was enjoying the panic evident in Raditz's face as it drew nearer. It was only ten paces away, now. I just needed a few more seconds. Raditz thought desperately. I'm not going to get the chance to complete my attack at this rate, and if I'm forced to stop now, the energy will all go to waste, so fighting it again won't be fun. Cell frowned. Why am I doing this? Putting all my energy in one wasteful attack, in what is bound to be a futile struggle with this infernal clone, an internal desire to prove I am unique. Conviction that no copy could possibly match me, perhaps. Futile, if noble, thought processes. But the fact remains, I can't get past it to Janemba, since it mimics my every action. His eyes widened as a thought struck him. My every action. Janemba was close now. Raditz could count the ridges in its armor. Perhaps it would kill him, what else, after all? would make for a better final opponent than the literal embodiment of the universe's collective evil. It certainly looked like a mythical devil. Even with his godlike new form it had bested him. Maybe it was simply invincible. It was inches away. Malice gleamed in its eyes. It flexed its clawed hands. Behind him, Kaishin, the closest thing the universe seemed to have to a god, and his servant cringed back, struggling to even stand upright under the weight of its power, simply from standing so close to the monster. Such a shame, though. I never got to test out this technique. It only needed a second or two more. No sooner had this thought passed through his mind than Cell phased into existence with instant transmission, directly to Janemba's right. Simultaneously, Cell's clone appeared to its left. Both flung their hands forwards into the Kamehameha position, Janemba between them. Hiya! The creature had just enough time to realize it had been outplayed, its own creation turned against it by a clever use of the rules it had itself created, before twin key beams, blue and purple, engulfed it from either side. Raditz grinned, this gave him those precious final seconds. All right, I've got it. Hiya. He forced more of his energy out of his body, letting it swirl in a vortex around him. Cell lowered his hands, falling to his knees, then dropping to the floor. Damn you, you made me use up, all my power. I'm spent. His copy also collapsed, vanishing as Janemba stopped expending energy to maintain its existence. It was angered by the attack, but as ever, undamaged. However, Raditz's rapidly rising power gave it pause for concern. It leapt back, shielding its eyes from the intense light. Everyone else is down. Raditz muttered. Can't have more than 30 seconds left in Super Scion 3, with all the energy I've put into this. This has to work. Because if I don't... He kicked off the ground, launching himself at Janemba. Who will? Graw. Janemba flung out its aura, an animalistic intimidation and self-reassurance tactic. Raditz, however, plowed right through the energy field, drawing back his right arm. Dragon. Something seemed to explode next to his arm, igniting the volatile energy he'd filled the air around him with. The flames whirled around him, coalescing into a ragged spiral. Fist. With that, the flames were enveloped in golden light, and something else emerged. Kaishin looked on, wide-eyed. I is that. How did he? Kibito mumbled. High above, on the sacred world of the Kais, the old Kai was sent stumbling around, clutching his head. What in the name of me? The confusion was justified. For the fiery energy had been transformed into an enormous golden dragon, flares of light running up and down its body, its head flying along parallel to Raditz's fist. It collided open-mouthed with Janemba as Raditz flew past, the dragon biting down, huge fangs piercing straight through Janemba's armor plates. With a final bellow of effort as he fell to the ground, in the instant before he lost his Super Scion III form, Raditz detonated the energy stored in the dragon, letting it explode in a violent storm of light and heat. Janemba finally managed to think coherently enough to shift away, but in addition from the huge, gaping bite wounds, it was now charred and burned all over its body. It howled in pain, beginning to limp towards Raditz's prone form, it was in bad shape but none of its enemies were in a fit state to oppose it anymore. At least, it thought so. Now. The hiss of instantaneous movement. Janemba frowned, slowly beginning to turn. Kibito, having provided transportation, took a step back as the Supreme Kai raised his hands, summoning forth his magical prowess. Darkness that has overtaken thee, little one, be gone. Janemba hissed, stumbling away. 
Thick black smoke began to rise from the open wounds left by Raditz's attack, the creature's very essence escaping it. The draining negative energy flocked towards Kaishin. Snapping his fingers, he materialized a small glass container inscribed with runic symbols. Demon within and monster without, away. He shuddered, pulling with all his mental might. There is no place for you, in this world, Janemba. At his determined incantation, Janemba began to evaporate, rapidly shrinking as its outer form vaporized and rushed into the magically sealed container in Kaishin's hand. As the last of the smoke was entrapped and he slammed the lid on, he could have sworn he heard a mocking whisper in his ear. There is no place in this world for Janemba. You say these things without even knowing the meaning of the name. He shivered. What was that? He put it out of his mind. Later. There were more immediate concerns. Kibito, would you see to the wounded? I shall. Kibito nodded, and walked off. Kaishin, meanwhile, stepped over to the small figure who stood where Janemba had been. A young ogre worker, wearing baggy clothes and large headphones. Ah, uh, I, ah, uh, sorry, man, hi, I don't know what happened, he stuttered. Are you, like, important? Am I gonna get fired? Ah. Uh. He wheeled around and fled as fast as his legs could carry him. Kaishin blinked. Ah. Uh. No, he won't be punished, sir, King Yemma was saying, alternating between frantically shuffling through and stamping the massive backlog of soul judgment paperwork and talking to Kaishin. It was just a clumsy accident. However, we will be reviewing the kind of system that lets a simple clumsy accident unleash hell upon the world of the living. You, he shouted to his personal assistant. I want whoever designed that negative energy machine in front of my desk, you got that. When, the assistant asked. Yesterday. Yema snapped, before turning back to Kaishin. Is there anything else, sir? The deity nodded. You've let Cell roam hell like the other evil souls. Yes, Yema replied. It would seem odd to make a special exception for him, seeing as there are so many other powerful villains in hell now. We simply don't collect enough negative energy, even if the machine hadn't been broken for the time being, to keep them all specially imprisoned. However, we hope that with Raditz having reached such levels of power, not to mention some of his living comrades, we can return to the previous balance, there's no threat of Hell's occupants running riot when there are heroic warriors capable of easily defeating them readily available. That does seem to be the case, Kaishin agreed. That will be all, Yemma. Carry on. Raditz breathed in the heavenly air, sweet and refreshing after the cloying heat of Hell. Seems like everything's working again, the villains in the living realm are being drawn back into Hell. Still, today proves that I'm not invincible, even as a Super Scion 3. There's still room for improvement. He took off, soaring up into the clouds. First thing is working on that damned energy drain. That's going to get me killed someday, he paused, eyeing the halo floating above his head. Well. Figure of speech.